ascending a staircase is, is all in pieces. Meaning is fragmented, and so we kind of find little bits and pieces here and there. And that's what you get in the wasteland. It's kind of like this is a picture that the wasteland could be, sort of. Because it's like we take meaning and we break it into teeny little pieces, and then you make a mosaic of it. Or in, in Picasso's case, it's what is, we did this with Stevens. What are you really seeing? Even, you know, even if you're on four different sides of the tree, you're going to see different sides of the tree for Stevens, right? So it is the person's mind that makes the meaning. Now, Elliot is not all into this. It's the individual person who makes the meaning. He's trying to find out if there is meaning somewhere. But at the same time, you've got the problem of everything is sort of fragmented. Who are we? I mean, you know, I mean, how, if, are y'all familiar, if you're familiar with Seinfeld, do y'all remember Seinfeld? Oh, yes. Okay. Still watching. Okay, good. You know when George, it's like George is, is dating somebody, but he doesn't want anybody to meet the girl? Yeah. Because girlfriend George and friend George, are two different. they're two different people. Yeah. And isn't that kind of true, right? And then you remember in Wallace Stevens, the idea of order at Key West, that, that she was the single artificer of the world in which she sang. And what she sings, what, what she sang was not a mask. There's, there's reality in it, right? It's not the sea, and it's not exactly her, but it's kind of this medley of both, kind of. But, or melding of both. Well, okay, here's what Elliot is working on. He's dealing with this same sort of thing. Um, and for the folks online, we will put up the, the nude descending a staircase, but it, you can't, I couldn't even tell which one's up with it, so you don't have to worry about it. Descending. Pardon? Well, you couldn't tell it was descending, because you can kind of tell there were some legs there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but let's look at the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock, and you're going to see a kind of fragmentation. We experience, this is why I say this is an important part of the course, especially for us today, because you experience what happens in a love song of J. Alfred Prufrock every time you turn on the television. We don't, and this is probably why, oh, why, um, I mean, they, educators complain about this all the time, that you don't get extended segments or extended um, scenes. You get just a couple of seconds. <laughs> for each scene and then it shifts, right? And so you get you get one person's face talking, another person's face talking, down those stupid crime things. You might get their cheek talking and then their eye talking and then then some really weird office that's lit all with blue lights and it's just very strange. I don't understand. Or then you just get something that's supposed to look like somebody's liver that's bleeding or something. I don't know. I don't understand it. But anyhow, that's what it's, all those crime shows, they just, it's supposed to be profound, so they just show me their nose. <laughs> Ooh, it's a person's nose. <laughs> I don't understand it. But anyhow, I, under, I, I claim to understand T.S. Eliot, so, so that probably means I don't. Um, let's skip the Italian on 2075 and start right off. This is a love song, right? Let us go then, you and I, when the evening is spread out against the sky, like a patient etherized upon a table. Just stop there. <laughs> Did you expect that third, third line, second line? Third? No. No. It's a love song. Let us go then, you and I, while the evening is spread out against the sky, like a patient etherized upon the table. He wants to be in complete silence with his person. Pardon? He wants to be in complete silence with his person. If, if it's a love song, um, it's a really awkward comparison. Just. Just? Are you married? Uh -huh. You're not. You meet a girl, you want to ask her out. Okay, so you're going to say, let's go for a walk. Knock on her door. And you go up and say, let us go then, you and I, while the evening is spread out against the sky, like a patient etherized upon a table. If this is a love poem, which part do you think you should leave out? Probably that part, the last line. The last line about the patient oh. etherized? Oh, oh, you go out with him every time. You don't know what words. 
<laughs> what is etherized? Yeah, put to sleep. Put to sleep. It's the way that back then they would have put somebody to sleep. And so it's a patient. What kind of table? Describe the image in your mind. Cold. Cold. What's the table made out of? Metal. Metal. Yeah, a cold metal table is not what you want a girl to think about when you're asking her out. That's just who. And being etherized, you know, that's like great, you know. Mm, no. So there's something jarring about that, right? And, and we want to think about what it means also, but let's just keep going. Let, like patient etherized upon a table, page 2076. Let us go through certain half-deserted streets. The muttering retreats of restless nights in one-night cheap hotels and sawdust restaurants with oyster shells. Okay, where, okay, read me the second line on 2076, Christian. Second line on 2076. Let us go through certain half-deserted streets. Okay. Through certain half-deserted streets. Okay. Read me the next line. The muttering retreats. And go one more line. Of restless night and one night cheap hotels. Okay. Um, so, now, Christian, read your line one more time. Let us go through certain half-deserted streets. Okay. Where are they going? Logan. Sounds like an alley. What? It sounds like an alley. An alley, yes. Um, tell me about the alley. What? Deserted. It's deserted? Dark. What? Dark. Dark. What's on this alley? What's on the alley? Cheap hotels, prostitutes. Cheap hotels, prostitutes, yes. Yeah, they're one night cheap hotels. There's a reason they're only one night hotels, yes. Now, is he propositioning her to go to the one night cheap hotel? Look at the grammatical structure. No. Why not? He just wants to go for a walk. He wants to go for a walk, and what in the what what word tells us we're not going to those streets? We're going through, through those streets. So we're, they're going to walk past cheap restaurants, cheap hotels, probably prostitutes, streets that follow like a tedious argument of insidious intent. Does that sound pleasant? No. No. Tedious. It's like you could get lost in these dark alleys, right? You could get lost there. Um, to lead you to an overwhelming question. Oh, do not ask what is it. Let us go and make our visit. Okay? So there's an overwhelming question. And then we get in the room, the women come and go talking of Michelangelo. What room? The room. The room. 